Anyway, uh, that underdog cartoon, that, they did that in my dad's studio. Did you know that? No. I should tell underdog lady that, although I don't know. Maybe that would win her over. All right. I used to go down and watch Wally Cox uh, make underdog. Yeah? Yeah, every once in a while I'd go down there and see it. I saw Wally Cox. I used to watch Don Adams do um, King Leonardo yeah. in Tennessee Tuxedo. He was Tennessee Tuxedo. Mm -hmm. My father's studio was uh, where they made those cartoons. My father had like a, re a recording studio. It sounds more impressive than it is. He had like five partners and I don't know. Never seemed to make a lot of money. What did the partners do? Were they well, engineers too? Well, it's yeah, it's a whole long story. My dad kind of got into it in a weird way. My dad was a radio engineer for this radio station. Yeah. And... uh the guy who owned it at the time was Fortune Pope, who was the guy who owned the Inquirer, or his brother owned the Inquirer, Generalissimo Pope or something. Hmm. It was a pretty wild family when they named the kids. Right. <laughs> you know, I guess they knew they were going to be something. Fortunoso and Generalissimo, you know? Well, with that Pope last name, yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah, what are you, Bob Pope? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you got to get wacky. Yeah, so my dad worked for this guy. And he bought, he used to just buy stuff. He bought this dumpy kind of recording studio right next door to the radio station. Uh -huh. You know, so he said to my dad, why don't you run it? My father said, nah, I don't want to run it for you because I'm in the union and I don't want to lose my union job, you know, working on the radio. So Pope really liked my dad. Instead of letting him run the Inquirer, though, he let him run the uh, <clears throat> recording studio. He says, no, 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 you go run the recording studio, and you can also stay in the union. You don't worry about it, okay? And, you know, if things work out, then we'll worry about it. So my old man started running it, and it was going really well. And uh, my father got together with five other guys and bought the studio. Oh. You know, and that's why I needed partners. Uh-huh. Plus, they were engineers also. Well, that's what I asked. Yeah. I wanted to know if he got together with a bunch of engineers and bought it. So it was five guys who uh, got together and... You know, bought this studio and tried to make a go of it, which they did. Yeah. You know, once he saw it was working out, he bought it. So, so he never made any money off of it or anything. You know, we lived in Roosevelt. And so my, my old man's house cost fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, but that was good then. Oh. That was right there in the middle class. That wasn't even good then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Good house was like twenty eight thousand. <laughs> you know, my old man, he'd rather travel an extra fifty miles just to get that house for fourteen thousand. But, uh, God bless him. Hey, he owned his own business. There you go, Robin. He didn't work for somebody all of his life. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and to this day, I don't think my father could stand that whole business. You're kidding. Well, he liked it. He, he would run the studio and stuff, and the other guys were all the, you know, the, my father stopped engineering after a while. Uh-huh. Because someone had to run it. Someone right. with a business mind. His partners just didn't have a business mind. They were all, like, artists, creative artists. Oh, really? Yeah, it was one of those things. So, you know, he started running it, and then his partners all became the creative artists, and which my father didn't mind, but I, I don't think he was generally appreciated for his business skills, which kept those guys going all those years. Well, maybe... Well, the way you carry on about him, you don't appreciate him for the business skills. Come to think of it, no. <laughs> would like a much better standard of living growing up. But anyway, 619-923 K-Rock, W-Y-S-P, W-J-F-K. But they one of the cartoons... It was a really big studio, too. That's what I couldn't figure out. It was supposedly the, the highest billing studio, the largest studio in New York. Yeah. Or a recording. According to my old man, they were the number one studio. Did all the McDonald's commercials there, all the, uh, you know, underdog cartoons, a lot of cartoons out of there. Well, then what happened? I don't know. Where was the bacon? <laughs> Where's the money? Where's the beef? If you're the biggest. Oh, yeah, my old man. Ah, oh, we just did a Pan Am commercial today. So, yeah, where, where is all that Pan Am money coming from, Dad? I mean, I remember you used to always complain because the guys from the advertising agency would come do the commercials, and then they would order, like, shrimp sandwiches. You had to feed them and stuff. Oh, that's part of the deal? Yeah, you have shrimp, shrimp sandwiches and stuff. I was always complaining, but I think they used to just put it on the client's bill. I don't know why I was complaining about that. So I used to ask him, and he just told me to shut up. <laughs> I said, Dad, why are you complaining about that if they pay for it? for the food. Ah, shut up. <laughs> smack me. <laughs> shut up. Just shut the hell up. See, you were making sense. That's what yeah. it was. I might have been in a better position to run that company. 